the way Will tells stories in real life, we're just working in the garage. He'll tell us little bits and pieces of things that happened last week or when he was 12. <laughs> and like, <laughs> it's all My over timeline. the place. Your timeline's all over the place. Mm-hmm. And I haven't actually pinned you down and figured out what some of these things even are. Ah, okay. Because I know when we were out doing the jet boat, you mentioned that you like started a business when you were like 12 that like crawls under basements with cameras. Oh yeah, Reggie and like, Robotics. And you still get residual <laughs> checks from I it? I still do, yeah, I got one last month. So you were like a whiz kid? Yeah, I mean, I was like a robotics kid, I was a nerd, I was doing like swindly stuff like that, and then one day I was like, I wanna work on cars, and then I just and started doing that. And then you just threw it all away. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave it all up for Subarus. Basically, yeah, head gaskets and tiny belt problems. <laughs> yeah. But see, that's the thing. Every time I try to ask you about this stuff, you just like make some jokes. It changes the subject. And move on. Yeah. Like, why I don't mean, you want to talk about it? Well, I mean, I don't it's know. It's really cool. It's like it's a little section of my life, but it's like a small little section. You know, my timeline's a little different. <laughs> I go through time and space at a different speed than most people. Ah, is that, is that how like it works? I'm twelve, but I also feel like I'm fifty-two. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you don't want to talk about your successful robotics companies well, you started in high school age? Not even. I mean, 12's middle school. Middle school. Yeah, I like started he was, that when I was like... My mom was still his teacher at that point. Yeah. So you had like, to take, I heard about this you from my take, mom. Uh, your business name in your like parents' names or something? No, actually, I started LLC. And then... You can start that. an LLC when you're 12? No, so I was... <laughs> I wasn't actually 12. I was 14. Oh, okay. And I wasn't in... Your mom's class no, you anymore. Wouldn't have been I was it. just yeah. out of it. Yeah, and then yeah. So basically, my dad used to go under houses and stuff at our house, and there was literal bears that lived under our cabin. So I was like <laughs> freaked out that my dad here. was gonna go under the cabin one day and just never come back. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, they wanted us to make this school project, and so I was like, what can I make? And I was really into like RC cars and like RC airplanes and stuff. And uh, FPV technology was like the new hot thing. Now everyone has it, like FPV drones and all yeah. this stuff. But then you but, really had to like make it yourself. Yeah, if you, you had to anything. like use 5.8 gigahertz and all this stuff to like make things work. And so I just basically bought a whole bunch of stuff and put together a little car that had like an arm on it, infrared an FPV that you could see on like a box and it all fit in the box and you could just show up somewhere and go under a house, inspect the house, look for what you need to look for. And it got so much attention. This company just reached out to me and they're like, we really want to produce this. I was like, okay. So how did it get attention though? Your dad told people about it? No, like I did a school presentation and then the local newspaper reached out and they're like, we want to do a story on this. And then this home inspection company, like (laughs) newspaper got a hold of it and they made a story on it. And then like this blog post person was like, look at this little car. And I'm like, oh no. (laughs) (laughs) Look at this little car. Did it have tires or tracks? It had like super knobby tires. Okay. Cause I've seen ads for ones that. And it was very like, it was like, janky. Yeah, it was like it was very janky, but it was just kind of a prototype, and they really liked the concept. So I sold them the idea. I sold the company name, Reggie Robotics. And it, where does the name come from? Who's Reggie? I don't know. You just made it up. <laughs> it was like four a.m. and I was crafting this thing, and of, I was like, "Of course, it was four a.m." So you were staying up at night crafting swindly machines, even yeah, when you were I, a kid. Yeah, I was just crafting swindly machines, and I was like. <laughs> This looks like a Reggie to me. So were so. there bears under the house when you went under there? No. They had long gone and moved. We found some cats with it. I remember the cats that were under your house. My mom those wanted cats were Yeah, crazy. they were they were evil. My mom yeah. wanted one of those to like catch mice in the chicken house or something. Mm-hmm. And I I tried I was crawling around under that house trying to catch I those cats. Ethan came out with some battle wounds. <laughs> I did. Dude, that cat it was it was a kitten. Like itty bitty kitten. I <laughs> caught one of them and it just destroyed my hand. This cat was evil. Yeah. I didn't realize you guys knew each other that like well. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, not like on and yeah. off. The first time, Ethan scared the crap out of me once. He like, <laughs> Wait, what? picked me up on a snowmobile once. Oh, I forgot about that. And 
he used to be a speedy boy. He makes me sound like a speedy boy, but he used to do crazy things. And we just... What? Why was I picking you up on the snowmobile? I don't... Just to come hang out. It was like when you... Oh, you it was when probably, I built the snow cave. Yeah, there was this yeah, giant yeah. snow cave here that was basically like a little mansion that Ethan built. And he drove me down to come see it. It was just the craziest experience. I was like... Oh, please don't tip over. It was before I like drove any like crazy yeah. things before. So that wasn't even my snowmobile. Yeah, it was very fun. It was very fun. It was my old boss's snowmobile. So that was that was... your first business venture? Um, before that, I owned a company called Hoversight Photography, and I actually got like one of those giant drones, the ones that have the like that so can hold a DSLR. Before you were twelve, you bought an octocopter. No, I think I was. 13 i owned an octocopter with a dslr on it and uh-huh. all this crazy stuff and i was doing a sh- i was doing a shoot for the wooden boat show on lake bondere and i took off and <laughs> i was flying and then all of a sudden like one of my motors came out and i was like pull over pull the boat over i gotta land this thing because it's like yeah, a twelve thousand dollar drone, <laughs> and I'm 13, like, Bro, how did you get a twelve thousand dollar drone from my other little ventures? I used selling to like stuff on eBay, lawns and stuff. I was a little hustler, so <laughs> that was like all my money though. And I was like, no, and so I just like watched in my goggles as the boat, and I'm like, hundred thousand dollar wooden boat. Oh. Or twelve thousand dollar drone, and I just had to take the loss. I just, <laughs> just crash it into the lake. My drone into the lake and oh, watch it just no. plummet down. Did you get? Did you retrieve it? Nope. It's but still down it, there. It's down. We there. need to go. We need to go scuba diving and find yeah. it. If well, you know where it, it is, it would be awesome. It's like in the deep, deep part of the oh. lake, but it would be. Also, it's probably covered in sediment by now. That's a lot of years. Awesome I really, really want to do a scuba expedition oh. with our mini jet boat. <laughs> Scuba out of it, you just like whoop out the back. Yeah. I've been that doing a be lot amazing. of research on this whole viral thing where this guy bought this company that owned a bunch of mammoth bones mm-hmm. and this museum in New I've York heard about dumped that. them in the river. I was thinking if we went out there with the mini jet boat <laughs> and did a scuba no. mission and found a mammoth tusk. Oh my god. And the tusk is bigger than the boat, we just ratchet strap it to the side of the boat and get out of there. Isn't this in like the middle of nowhere, Alaska? Um, his property. Oh, that's where he found it. The the bones are. He shipped the bones to a museum, and then the museum just threw them away. But he, his company, still owned the bones. He just shipped them there to get like studied and labeled, and then they're still property of his business. But they just apparently have paperwork that says they threw them into the East River. Problem with the East River is, as far as miniature jet boats are concerned, (laughs) it's the most dangerous diving spot. Like. Oh, I am or, I am no longer on board with this project. <laughs> well, I do not want to die in a scuba no, accident. We'll be fine on the boat, but we got to find a diver. Well, what I'm brave. thinking is you could attach like a really long hose to me, and then hold it on the jet boat and that's, just plunk me down there, and, and then you would have. That's how you die, me. Will. I kid you not. The people who are doing it right now. That's essentially what they're doing. They yeah. have Home Depot air compressors mm-hmm. on the boats with giant tubes. Yeah. It's not like you go down there with your tank. Mm-mm. Yeah, because you can stay under a lot longer if you have a compressor because it's just constant supply. Yeah, you have a snorkel. Yeah. But what happens is the the current moves in, so you mm-hmm. can't dive because it will just push you. And then it's kind of chill for 20 minutes, and then the current moves out. Mm. So it's in a, have, like an estuary. Oh, yeah. you only have we have a certain minutes, amount of time. 20 minutes a day where you can dive for the bones. Mm. No thanks. Put like <laughs> I, I pass on this venture. You know when you take like, there's a people bowl. who are way more qualified to be doing this than us. <laughs> I want a mammoth tusk. That would be sick. Or a mammoth bone. I know. Even that just would be like really a cool. mammoth shark. I could turn it into a shifter, dude. That's so many <laughs> style points. You got a mammoth bone shifter, just yeah. blah, blah. so maybe your next venture should be uh, diving for mammoth. That'd bone be sick. I'm just thinking like submarine. tie like a Walmart boat anchor to my foot. Yeah. Take like a fish tank. Air hose on the top, drop me down there, and I'll like explore <laughs> yeah. for a little while. No, I'm so into it. Every <laughs> every day after I finish like the grind hard stuff, mm-hmm. I've been really looking up. There are submarine. They call them underwater drones, but they're just submarines with cameras. Yeah, and like they, got, they like, have the four little claws. Yeah, like they can actually go down and grab stuff. They seem to be pretty uncommon, but you can actually just go and buy one. That would be sick. And you have a screen on your controller just like the drones we use for our videos. Yeah. And then you can go down, little clock, and pick things up. I saw someone pick How up How heavy a is a mammoth can. bone? 
Oh, Heavier good. than that could pick up oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, it's not very deep. If you found okay. it, you could just go down and get it. Or you could oh. take the drone with a little piece of rope and tie oh, it around yeah. there and then pull it up. Yeah. Ethan's got some style. Yeah. And there are some one. YouTubers that are diving YouTubers who are in there looking for the bones. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking maybe we could do a collab video. Oh, there you go. We just we take them out on the jet boat. Yeah. Where is this then? You, uh, it's the East River, and so it's in, in Manhattan. In, oh, okay. Yeah. The jet boat Dang. would fit on a carry-on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty out of our way, but maybe we'll wait until like someone actually finds a bone, so yeah, we know kind we'll of go. roughly where they are. So no one's it's actually like, finding them yet. No, no one's oh. found one. Yeah, this is really <laughs> dumb idea. This is really not a great idea. But if you do find one, oh, there's potentially mammoth tusks there that are worth like a quarter million dollars. Think of the Subarus there's, you could buy with one mammoth tusk. Yeah, food. that's yeah. amazing. So, well, you should be thinking about. A house that you could buy oh. with a mammoth, mammoth tusk. Oh. Subarus don't appreciate that. You can that live well. in a Subaru yeah. and uh, drive a Subaru. <laughs> well, you buy and sell so many Subarus, mm -hmm. you're changing the local image of our brand. Oh. I kid you not. <laughs> I ran into three people this weekend because I've been driving uh -oh. around the Tesla. Yeah. So, it, you know, mm -hmm. people know it around here. And so people come up to me and they're like, Oh, my brother just bought a Subaru from uh, from you. Oh, are you Will? And I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm I'm Edwin, but Will does buy a lot of Subarus. Yeah. And then this other guy came up to me, and he was like, Oh yeah, like you have the coolest Subaru. And I was like, Not only you're changing the brand <laughs> image, you're changing my image. <laughs> yes. People think that I, I actually mean, support this because Edwin hates Subarus Edwin so hates much. Subarus. This is hilarious that people think Edwin is yeah. the Subaru guy. So people it's come weird. up to me and they want to tell me about their, you know, their STI 13 pounds of boost mm -hmm. in their J24 RE. That's not a no, thing. Yeah, that's no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's not me. Oh, that's oh. perfect. Because yeah. Edwin has despised Subarus for a long time. Yeah. So. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your drone business. Never was that the end of it? Ground, quite literally. Well, yeah, that was the end of it, but it had gone for a really long time. Like oh, I so worked with local money. newspapers and stuff, and then like I did a lot of stock video. And so they did they just see your demo reel, hire you, and then mm -hmm. when you showed up, realize you were thirteen. <laughs> yeah, they were just like they just kind of were like. I mean, no nice. one else was doing it at the time. Yeah, no, here. it was like really there's not around no, here anyway. Yeah, yeah. like <clears throat> aerial. Videography and photography was not a thing here, yeah. like at all. Now everyone has a drone that fits in their pocket and yeah. like, controls on their own. Because my first drone job was the Phantom 4 mm -hmm. Advanced. Yeah, that I started was way out way after that, and then yeah. I filmed this documentary in Montana with that drone, and mm -hmm. I crashed two in one week. Also into a river, one of them. Oh, yeah. no. I literally dove off. We were going down the Yellowstone River I on a raft. I saw the flashing battery light, and I dove off and grabbed it. And you got it. Yeah. How many drones have you crashed and destroyed? There's no way of knowing. Oh, no. So I, many. I crashed probably over $12,000 worth of drones, consumer level oh, drones no. before grind hard that's terrible because they used to be like 400 to a thousand dollars yeah means, well, the, well the, the phantoms were like the, the phantom they were like, like a thousand 13, yeah yeah, yeah. 1300 yeah. bucks and then you get like the extra batteries and whatever yeah. and it goes up quick but yeah i crashed mm. so many and when i crashed drones i crashed to win <laughs> i crashed one over silverwood once really oh yeah like into the park just barely. I was flying over the park. It's this big amusement park here. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. very random. It's, it's like the only big. amusement park in this entire half of the country, basically, because yeah. we have better things to do here. It's so random because basically a guy bought the property to set up his train. He like really likes trains. And was that people, the first thing on the amusement park? Oh, yeah. Train. He yeah, the bought train. the property yep. for his train. He's just a train enthusiast. And then other people were like, oh, I'd like to ride your train. And he was like, maybe I'll open my train up for public. And then he got into collecting roller coasters, and that's why there's... Collecting roller coasters? Yeah, no, <laughs> this guy is, like, the way I understand it, the way it's been told to me, is this guy is just a collector of things. I feel like he why. needs to be on our podcast. Yes, yeah, we need the sure. dude. Actually, I know where he lives. That sounds really creepy, but I know he... <laughs> <laughs> One of, some people that I know from the school that my mom teaches at, they, they okay. had a really, really, really nice lake house, and they just sold it to him. So that's oh. good. Oh, yeah. So that means he's still alive, which is good. Yeah. 
Hmm. So, <clears throat> this is the way that I was told. He made money doing something else, really wanted this train, restored the train on the property, like the track and everything that you can go on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in it's October, a really slow train. They have fake zombie It's the Zombie Express. Trains. It's actually pretty fun. That one Steven and I bad. both worked there for, for the yeah. Scary Wood and thing. And Ethan rode unicycles for hours on end there. Mm -hmm. Really? Just, yes. Mm. I almost had my first kiss on that train. Premium. Cool story. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Almost doesn't count, especially not with that. Yeah, I kind of missed. Yeah. It. So, uh, yeah. I didn't again. <laughs> so, anyways, then people started like going on the train, and he opened it up to public. Mm -hmm. And then that's why Silverwood's such a bizarre theme park. It has like these vintage buildings and mm. candy. It stars. does have like an old west sort of theme. This it old does. west sort of theme, but then like. For a while, there weren't that many rides. It was just like this collection, or like the the merry-go-round. It's like yeah. there's some history to it. Yeah, all and the like, rides are like wooden, like yeah, all the old ones. Everything is kind of a restored historical thing. Now mm -hmm. it's more of a business, and they have proper roller coasters and stuff. But that's why there's so many weird attractions that don't have like any lines, I've even when wondered. it's busy. Yeah, just like really it's because it was just kind of like he was just he was collecting stuff. his own itch like he wanted it no oh. and it like the dude that built the snow cat that we drove around the other day yeah yeah <laughs> he just wanted it and so we have he a he built it we have a disproportionate number of like eccentric rich people we do who do <laughs> weird around here like yeah. you know the, the, i never saw it which i'm kind of bummed about but the bird uh museum oh, the, yeah. oh that museum it sounds sick. like it's a museum of birds but the guy's last name was bird and it yeah. was a aviation museum but yeah. it was like privately owned and now it's it's gone unfortunately yeah. but he invented um, the iron lung right he yeah had one of the original les paul guitars in there signed like really cool this yeah. guitar i don't know how much this is worth like millions for a guitar that's crazy he had planes hanging from the roof like yeah he had went, like right? old cars yeah they had yeah. a uh, inventors like fair there and mm -hmm. i went when i was a kid like every single yeah year. so i'm so bummed i never went there i just yeah, never yeah. had like a reason to but you would have loved it yeah like and it was all like engineering based stuff like there's yeah. planes yep. that were like basically cut, cut in half yeah, yeah. so you could see everything and how it worked but i don't know what it is about i think it's these kind of eccentric, wealthy people yeah, that yeah. want to collect yeah. stuff. Like, you come here and you can kind of do whatever you want. Right. You think of trying to have a collection like that in another state yeah. with more well, rules I don't and think regulations. Very, yeah. And back when, like, that guy moved here, land was super cheap here, too. Yeah. So, like, he could buy all that land yeah. and build the building for really cheap. Now that's ob absolutely not Where the case. Where do you get but. such a small, weird train? Because that train is, like, not normal. I, I think he um, imported it from Europe or something, oh. right? Uh, probably not. Well, I don't know. I mean, I have no idea where he got that. But narrow-gauge railroads used to be a thing. They were just for, like, shorter oh. runs and smaller stuff. They would. They, it's called narrow-gauge because the tracks are narrower. Small, um, yeah. I've been on one that's still uh, operating as a steam train in um, New Mexico. I went hmm. there with my grandmother and my oh, mom. Oh, really? And, yeah, it's pretty cool. It actually goes, like, <laughs> it's called the Coombers and Toltec Railroad. It's mm. and it, it starts in whatever. It's, it's on the border of New Mexico and Colorado, I think, and it goes all the way up to the mountains. But yeah. anyway, yeah, there, there were smaller railroads like okay, that. Okay, yeah, because I was trying to think, I'm like, that wasn't a real size train last no. time I saw it. It's like a medium train. But they would have often been for like to go to a specific mine oh, or okay. something like yeah. that, where it's like they're not going across the country. They just had a specific Small run of like here to there. Yeah. yeah, I think another reason why these people end up here is a lot of them are into aviation. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a really good spot as far as there's a bunch of small airports mm. and really beautiful mm -hmm. locations. And like if you retire early on like a big amount of money and you're into planes, like Sandpoint good spot is to... kind of like a chill place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then like you can fly to all the other cool spots. Like I think that uh, certain places in Wyoming are also like like Jackson Hole, but it's like way, way more expensive there. But you could like be here, have like a mansion on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere yeah, for pretty and then fly there too. in like an hour yeah. if you have a plane right mm -hmm. so versus it probably costs five times as much in jackson oh yeah totally yeah i mean heck we have like a small plane manufacturing company here too like yeah <laughs> yeah we've got a lot of cool companies yeah. that yeah. started here oh yeah, yeah. lighthouse dressings mm -hmm. the, cold water creek well that one's dead now but yeah, that one didn't survive they were doing yeah. some questionable investing practices <laughs> yeah. that did not survive 2008 <laughs> nope <laughs> but the very first drone controlled with an iphone was invented here yep like, x-craft like, yeah. oh i didn't yep. know that that's and cool and that sold for that sold on shark tank shark right? tank yep yeah they, like a ton of money a ton like yeah 
Yeah. It's a place of innovation. Yeah. yeah. It's very We're cool. out I don't here. Know what it is. The world's fastest Barbie cars are built here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the world's, yeah. The world's fastest. The, world's fastest, yep, the yep. world's fastest snow bike. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff you wouldn't know was in a little yeah. town in Idaho. What would you do, Will? Let's what say, would I do? Let's like if say, you're if you're the one you're of these eccentric ex- dudes. Because I think you would be. I think maybe I would be more like if I don't know. This is. The I think you'd be more like here. It's more than win the lottery type money. Yeah. Like, yeah. This they is have like. like they, generational wealth almost. yeah they like started a business that made like hundreds of millions of dollars yeah of people and then who just like here. chilling so if you had hundreds of millions of dollars i feel like you'd be more <laughs> yeah. of an eccentric have all these toys and yeah. i would just like do exactly what i'm doing because like i don't know what else to do yeah <laughs> I, I feel like you're also just more like financially conservative than oh, than will yeah. by, by like orders of magnitude will, will just spent what four thousand dollars on a JDM wing for your Subaru. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. I've gotten all these JDM parts showing up at the shop. Did you and hear? They're worth the money. Did you hear about how he's converting his car to right-hand drive just mm-hmm. for the JDM style I points? I got the whole front. He got an entire front clip the of another front Subaru. Of a car, dude, it showed up at my shop but in a, a you giant just truck. Work months on your engine bay, like the yeah. whole front. And now the interior. No, not the front. I'm just taking the dash piece out. Yeah, because it's just I'm, you just have to swap over like the steering yeah, column and stuff. Yeah, it's cut off the front of a JDM car, and I'm taking that piece. <laughs> And I'm gonna put it in there. It's gonna be. I asked so him how much cool. he spent on it, and he said I didn't want to know. Mm-hmm. Just to make his car right-hand drive, because I want to be able. You know, it but makes most sense. of your money is made from the hustle and bustle of doing these engine swaps. Yes. you're not making that much off your previous businesses, right? No, like little residual checks from Reggie Robotics and yeah. stuff. But so like, you're not a wealthy man, <laughs> and you're dropping. I mean, so much money on this stuff, you don't even want to tell us what it costs. I mean, like. I've got my side bustlings and hustlings. Well, I know, like you, you're buying and selling Subarus, yeah, and like so you I get, get really good I deals. I get good deals, like, and I know that yeah. you make good money, but mm-hmm. like, yeah. you're spending all it of all it. All goes right? towards cars, all of it, but so, all the everything. same car. It seems like recently, Super, basically. Oh, well, yeah, he's got car. now he's got street bikes too. So yeah, uh, this is, week I acquired five street bikes. This week, <laughs> and I just got back into it. So how many like, do you have total? Because you ha- you got a couple over the last few weeks. Yeah, so I had like I had three street bikes over the last couple of weeks, and now five, six, seven, eight, eight street bikes. Well, so the the question remains: and, oh. What would you be doing if you had essentially unlimited money? All I want is an aircraft hangar, okay? Like an aircraft thing. hanger, a big one that can fit like. I mean, big who doesn't want one of those? In it. And I just want like sections of things that I'm interested in. Like I want like 100 Subarus. And then I want like 100 Hayabusa's and like other things. And I just want like this selection of things that are like different colors, different makes, like special VINs and stuff, like things you can't acquire. Like I want like <laughs> Subaru. All of these like things though is what I don't understand about Subaru people. I just want it. I want like, like the JDM seats, like in a corner, like all premium. Edwin, like, just I, replace I, the word Subaru with BMW. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like I don't. Yeah, like, yeah <laughs> That's I, what want, I want like a really clean E30 someday. Mm-hmm. But like, what I don't understand is, let's say you're gonna spend two hundred thousand dollars on a car, mm-hmm. a race car. Yeah, twenty two. All these Subaru people buy STIs and put so much money mm-hmm. into them. Special. Why wheels. don't they just buy like? an actually cool race car <laughs> because it's so cool like when you show up at a car meet and you have like a three of one tire selection and like your interior has like this super special like carbon fiber thing that like cost is like this big and it costs like five hundred dollars and it's just like a little sticker and it's like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you just get like so much respect you know and you have the shift knob that's like weighted and it's like you just get into someone's car that's like really into it and you're like dude no. so it's there's so many people that are so into it other people realize your swag it's yeah, a, it it's a community like thing community. yeah they yeah. like <laughs> they like grab your wing and they're like they know it's real and like they just oh, like no. look like they see your car and they know like this is real so what's the most expensive part on your car single part mm. is it this clip well that because that's a bunch of parts to convert it to Right hand drive, that'd be like a handful because you got the no. Dash actually, and the, the clip super affordable. Like you just got this bumper. How much is that? Uh, the bumper was I want to say like two thousand 
the oh, so cheaper so than not the wing because yeah. your wing was four. Four thousand. So the wing probably has one individual part. Fully is, carbon. Fiber, so your like, wing costs more than the original acquisition of the car. Oh, but like, yeah, I spent, four times I the price. I only bought the car for eighteen hundred bucks from my buddy That's Brian. What I don't get putting all this money into it. And it was a one well, car. Uh, Edwin, it's it's to use so Will's special. terminology. It's because you craft it yourself. I I know. I mean, like having That's been crafted. into Subaru is like. They are, as far as cars to work on, they're extremely easy. Mm -hmm. And like, if you start with a cheap car, like to answer your question about like, why wouldn't you just buy a $20,000 race car? Mm -hmm. Well, because then you'd have to spend that 20 grand all at once. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have the, the experience of building it yourself. And not that you can't do that with any other brand of car, but like that well, is 20, the appeal of the Subarus. 20, I totally get. If mm -hmm. you got $20,000 for a race car, souping up mm -hmm. your own Subaru seems like the way to go. Yeah. Like our friend Lucas wins autocross with his, and I mm -hmm. assume he's spent probably even less. Probably a lot less. He's yeah. a, he's a but hustler like, too. What I don't understand if you have like hundreds of thousands of dollars and yeah. you want to build something special, starting off with a car that every single high school boy has. Yeah. Like when you want like, something a little more like you, you can, but like, there's like the bunk eye boys and then there's like the premium boys and they like, they spend like, a hundred thousand dollars on their Subaru, and you know it. Like you know that car is worth a hundred thousand dollars. Like even though what? it has the same no. head gaskets at the end of the day, it's <laughs> worth it. It's sick. And like I don't know, I just you could start with any car. You know, I yeah. could start with like a car that's worth more or worth less. But at the end of the day, it's like my car doesn't look like this little like pea shooter 5000 that i bought a year ago it's like okay. different it's know? about the transformation is this is a super common vehicle mm -hmm. and mine is extra extra special yeah like when you see it rolling down the road and like it's like finally fully built like yeah the engines built the yeah. engine base built the interiors built like the exteriors built it's like, you know, there's not that many super fast Subarus on the road either. Like, yeah. they usually Everybody like thinks 200, they're fast, right? <laughs> 300 horsepower, but I want yeah. mine to be, like, really fast. Yours is, like, going to be 700? 700 is what it should be. You know, it hasn't been on dyno or anything, but 150 shot of nitrous. My turbo is, like, this big. <laughs> I've got like all the things. It's going to go and for five going minutes. To go. And then it'll be is so it, fast. Is it projected to last like for a couple hours or? Well, when I was asking the person who built my engine, they were like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like we were just sitting there like looking at it, and he was like, mm, yes. This will last. But and what does like, that mean? I don't know, but <laughs> because usually, like, I don't know. I have really good luck with Subarus, but. This one has been tampered with a lot. So I'm like, I'm hoping it lasts. When yeah. you're when you're pushing 700 horsepower out of a two, is it 2.5? Yeah, it's yeah. A 2.5. Out of a two and a half liter engine, that's, mm -hmm. you know, you're getting, at that point, you're getting like well over 200 horsepower per liter. Mm -hmm. You're getting like, what, 250 horsepower per liter? Uh, or I don't know. Yeah, like 300, almost, yeah, no, 300 horsepower per liter. That's into the territory of, like, you cannot make that reliable. Oh, no. It's just, like, the only thing that can make that much power per liter reliably, quote-unquote reliably, is like a Koenigsegg. Something oh. that's millions of dollars. Yeah, like, you, say you know, the, not the, the, there's the dollars. triangle. <laughs> well, there's a triangle. There's fast, cheap, and reliable, and yeah. you can only pick two. Yeah. yeah when we were at SEMA, I so talked to these guys who had a 1,000 horsepower, um... S2000 mm. and they were like I wish we would have done 500 oh and made it like super strong yeah, usable yeah. they say it's really fun and it's amazing mm -hmm. but they've only driven it twice and it always has like things yeah. that need to be done yep but like yeah. Well, I have my reliable, I have the lifted Subaru with the turbo out the hood that's my reliable <laughs> car <laughs> well here's the good news uh, well you know it's, it's, a, it's a blessing in disguise if you will uh, for the sake of the car Will's going to drive it once mm -hmm. and then be in jail for the rest of his life. So oh. the engine will never blow up. <laughs> there you go. It'll be in, if they inbound that They're going to crush it, Will. Oh, no. They're going to crush your baby banana. Mm. Is, is it still going to be yellow? No. All I know about impounding cars is from what I've seen from Fast and Furious. <laughs> oh, no. So what is the what is what actually happens? Well, like, my car's been impounded thing? twice. The The yellow car? Yeah. But you didn't drive it around only for like a couple months, right? I know. But 
it's been impounded twice. So they put like the fence and then they charge you money to get it back. Yeah, they put it in this fence area mm-hmm. and I don't like it because like I have to explain to them before they take me away. I'm like, don't put this on a dolly. Like, don't drive this car. Roll it off. Like, you don't understand what you're doing. Like, don't just like, there's buttons in here that turn the fuel on. There's buttons that turn the fuel off. Like, you're going to have an explosion. <laughs> you got to watch out. So do they just put it behind lock and key yep. until you finish your court and yep. then you get it back? Mm-hmm. How much is it to get back? This is only like 500 bucks. Uh, but, but that's assuming that you get out. Yeah, if you get out. If, if you don't get out, I'm pretty sure they'll just crush it eventually. Yeah. What if you go to jail for like or auction it, two months or something? They'll keep it. But the price goes up because like it's every storage day fees. it's in there is more. Oh. So like, so they won't like, if you get caught going like 100 miles an yeah. hour in a 45, they won't, crush, they won't crush it, it. Unless it's over there for like a two years. You probably have, yeah. to, you have to pay the storage fee oh, and then no. charge you to have your own car crushed. Oh, Will, you're, we're, we're explaining your future here if you don't change oh, your ways. No, I've changed my ways a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah, but the car doesn't run currently, so yeah, I know. it's easy it's to change your ways. There and it's just like, yeah. but this is the first project that I've really like, spent some time on. Usually, I just take things, like you guys probably seen from the videos, I just take things and I craft them and they might not work very well, <laughs> but they like roll around and they might not have might brakes not. and like things like <laughs> like that but this car i've really like spent some time like every day i like do things right and i just take my time you know well i'm, so. ex- I'm excited to see it yeah, when it's, it's done it's yeah. a work in process i want to put ethan in the same situation though what just, oh yeah the for money some thing freak reason you inherit hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> like, well it won't be inheritance nobody in my family has any money <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the saudi prince wrote you yeah, right. down on accident yep. what then what does your life look like uh i mean from the outside it'd probably look pretty pretty similar i mean i'd like it'd still live in a small house in the middle of nowhere i'd just be you know like farther in the middle of nowhere like a like house on a cliff somewhere. I've always had this dream of building like a really absurd house in on or around a cliff um, with like a whole lot of glass and big, huge rocks like incorporated into the design of like just crazy architectural stuff. And you'd still build it all yourself. Yep. That would be the point is to build. I mean, like the more money I had, the more work I would do myself, basically. Like well, it's an in, it's an inverse correlation. Then you can afford the time. To exactly. Do your yeah. own thing. Cause and that's, then, yeah money aside that's what you would want to be doing regardless yeah is being cool yeah creative like you know so like with with what we do i've like i've very largely scratched the itch of building vehicles like there's still some vehicles that would be fun to build and we will over the years but like in conjunction with that i'd get really into woodworking like i've done woodworking here and there and like this isn't woodworking but you know furniture stuff mm-hmm. like you know i built this bar over here like i'd get more into that side of things and build like really elaborate like built-in furniture in that house and like you know that would be you know I, like i guess if i was just continually bored i'd probably just keep building weird houses in the middle of nowhere like that and then i don't know rent them out or something so they weren't empty <laughs> not that i'd need the money but like <laughs> i don't know it's just like that's i mean I, don't, I basically i really don't have any idea what to do other than build stuff like it's the only thing i like it's the only way i know how to enjoy life is creating things yeah, I and, think and like i mean for a lot of people yeah, right like I do other stuff in between it, like going and snow biking and, you know, whatever, traveling, that kind of stuff. But that, like, I can only do that for a little bit. Yeah. And then I need and to go back to building stuff. Are relatively cheap. Yeah, exactly. They're like, all pretty cheap. And so, like, yeah. yeah, it's like I wouldn't have a garage full of Lamborghinis. Like, I, I don't really think there's any amount of money I could have where I'd want a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. Or, I mean, like, I always say that, like, you know, my zero money aside dream car is a Koenigsegg. But that's, that's like, super... Um, the abstract and like I don't actually like even if I had you know five hundred million dollars I don't think I'd own a Koenigsegg because yeah. there's just nothing you can do with it. Yeah. I love the engineering of it, so when somebody asks about cars, that's the answer. But yeah, like it's like to look at it, yeah, and to realize and appreciate the engineering and like yeah, that would be the cool part. Like I'd but you, almost yeah. rather tour the cones exactly factory than precisely yep. own one right mm-hmm. and just the and go for a ride in one yeah absolutely but you don't yeah. have to own it to do that you just pay for a track day in a cone i'm sure there's somewhere in the world you can do that <laughs> yeah, <for laughs> with sure. enough money yeah <laughs> i mean that said i would have like you know elaborate weird vehicles to access and build said you know 
weird yeah. houses. Like that seems to be the kind of stuff you want. Like yeah. we were looking at Unimogs. You want yep. the one with the backhoe the attached. Weird yeah. yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> they're always just really bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> You're like you know have an LMTV to plow the driveway or like you know yeah. a Humvee with tracks to get yeah. there. You know Which like we're just in a really good line of work <laughs> yeah. for you yeah. accomplishing those it's goals exactly. without being a hundred millionaire. <laughs> yeah, it's like really it's. I mean, I already bought a piece of property in the middle of nowhere to build you know one of these types of things. So yeah, you it'll be talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to like say where it is or show it on camera because yeah. I got to have something <laughs> private. But like, yeah, yeah, that's like, you know, like I was saying, that's one of that's been one of my dreams for many, many years. I mean, before I even really owned this place, I grew up here, but I didn't. It was my mom's place. And, you know, before that, like I've always had this, you know, I was building tree houses and like just, you know, tree houses are cool, but they're temporary. So like that is kind of the they're sound. inherently temporary but yeah it also is kind of like it's part of the beauty of it yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. for sure but like you know i just extrapolate building weird houses into you know something weird more permanent things. and long term mm -hmm. and then like it, it's kind of like two extremes of a spectrum of like a tree house is really cool and you know philosophically interesting because it's inherently temporary the other extreme of that is like i've always had an, another idea for building houses something that's just extremely permanent like that would last for hundreds or thousands of years like a uh -huh. bunker type thing no not a bunker it would be like <laughs> bunkers I, I don't care i don't bunkers yeah. don't interest me they're not like they're not creative like yeah you can build one under, but like build one that's you know built into a giant rock cliff face and you're just you know building oh, something that's sick. like it's built out of all materials that are either you know extremely durable in themselves or well enough protected from the elements you know just like houses like this are just so temporary even even like people think of concrete as permanent but it has a lifespan of like 100 years max when you put rebar in concrete that's a death sentence for the concrete after about a hundred years, give or take your climate. Mm. So, Does you know, the just rebar, the rebar rusts and it expands wow. and breaks apart your foundation. So really? that's why the Roman concrete wow. has been around for 2000 years because it doesn't have rebar. rebar in it. They also had wow. some secrets of mixing like volcanic ash and seawater. And there was some, wow. they've recently figured that kind of stuff out. That so how do they do foundations for like skyscrapers and yeah, rebar skyscrapers? Just no one cares. A hundred years. Give or take. I mean, oh. you can make it last a little longer. So at some point, they'll have to tear those buildings down and build new ones. Yeah. But I mean, like, look at Vegas. Vegas is just like a slightly accelerated version of that. Oh, yeah, because, because all those videos of them destroying just, hotels yeah. and buildings. Not that, not that those were... Man, that seems wasteful. That's it's so, so wasteful. wasteful. And, like, there's ways to prolong it. Like, for example, in, in Oregon... Um, we're way off track here, but who cares? It's fun. <laughs> so, in, in Oregon, there's a whole bunch of bridges, specifically Oregon, because it's so moist and coastal and, and uh, you know, all the salt water and stuff. There's a whole bunch of old bridges that are deteriorating uh, because of this reason for the, because the rebar is rusting, but I you can, no idea I didn't know yeah, that you can, you can run, um, I don't remember the exact like way that you do it, but basically if you run electrical current through the rebar, huh? it massively slows down the rust process. Uh, there's a what? little more to it than that, but Whoa. essentially, I, like I said, I don't know the details, but essentially, so that's, you can prolong things like this, but- at Oh, the, because it doesn't bond. It's like a molecular Yeah, it's, level, a, it's right? exactly. It so it, it stops the, the uh, oxidation of the yeah. metal um, because of science. So they're just running like science. city power to rebar yeah, in basically. these things? They mm -hmm. do that for underwater, um, Oh, not submarines. There's some kind of underwater construction. Where yeah, probably like fiber optic cables and stuff. Yeah. Time, yeah. Another thing that I just learned about the other day That's that crazy. they do is, um, so if you have two dissimilar metals, um, like say this example was about uh, copper and steel, um, like iron steel nails on a boat a long time ago. But if you have two dissimilar metals in a corrosive environment, the more... Uh, unstable metal, in other words, the one that's more prone to corrosion between those two, obviously steel is far more, it corrodes far faster than copper. It will, if they're in contact, it'll actually take all of the corrosion away from the, the less corrosive one? metal to the more corrosive one. So what? It's insane. So steel pipes underground, like water pipes, yeah. they attach a little chunk of like, uh, what was it? Magnesium or some like really reactive metal. Mm -hmm. And they just take a little brick of it with a wire to the steel pipe. And that takes all the corrosion and just what? erodes away in a few years, but the pipe but then doesn't you get just corroded. Replace that one piece instead of the whole pipe. Yeah, I mean That's it has ridiculous. to do with like free electrons and a whole bunch of chemistry and stuff that I don't, that wow. I barely understand, what? but really cool wow. stuff. So anyway. What are they what are they doing with the bridge in Oregon then? That's the, they use electrical current in that one, so that's another way to do it, I guess. Okay. I don't. But, but when it started, because you said they're deteriorating. Yeah. So they they 
plugged in the steel oh. later mm -hmm. to make it cool. Yeah, to, to, to slow down the corrosion process. That's so cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. <laughs> ridiculous. So that's why, you know, all the older, you know, like, you know, they're not always a hundred years. That's just kind of a rough number. Mm -hmm. But like, if you don't take care of it and it's in- It's just sitting it's there. It's just like sitting there. It's like, it's not a lot more than a hundred years before you have to at least like heavily re- you know, fortify it and stuff. So. so if you had a truck in a salty environment, could you just like charge your yep. frame? Mm -hmm. What? How yeah, you could not doing that. Well, it's just not, I mean, for trucks, it's not like it would have to be yeah. like, I guess the truck isn't going to live past the rust anyways. Yeah. And worth exactly. And like, you know, and you'd probably, it'd probably have to be in a way that wouldn't really be, I don't know, I'm guessing yeah, here, but you probably couldn't really drive it in that state, you know, to be like a storage thing, oh, yeah. you know, like, I don't know that you could drive a car that had current yeah. constantly running through And if you're charging its, or, your yeah, frame and you like pull up to the gas station. <laughs> yeah. Oh <my> <laughs> oh. Kaboom. But so yeah, I mean, back to the original thing of like building a, you know, crazy house or something like that that would last a really long time. You know, you'd either use, you, you can do concrete without rebar. You just have to have it a lot more of it as like a foundation. Instead of like a eight inch thick foundation wall, you'd do like a two foot thick foundation wall. You know, right. it's way more expensive. And there's, there's also synthetic rebar now that's like made out of fiberglass and stuff. So synthetic, I mean, it's all synthetic, but yeah. non, non corrosive rebar. So I don't know. I haven't really researched what I would actually do in that case, but, um, but yeah, back to that property. Yeah, I, you know, bought a really cheap piece of 10 acres in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by national forest that has really cool views and is really hard to access. <laughs> it's only 13 miles from town, but it's all dirt roads that are not plowed at all in the winter. So yeah, the only way to get there in the winter is by snow bike, right? Mm, or Humvee with tracks. Or anything with tracks, really. Like, yeah. <laughs> we'll have something with tracks yeah, pretty yeah. soon here. Mm -hmm. Every time Ethan is on Facebook, he's like, look at this tracks. Me. Like, look yep. this <laughs> <laughs> it's that time of year. It's the tracks time of year. Uh, but, but yeah, anyway, so that's, that's, you know, yeah. I mean, obviously no one can really say what they do with that kind of money without actually having it because your yeah. plans change as your situation changes. So, but yeah. that's probably what I'd be doing, but you know, it, it makes it sound like I'd be a reclusive lunatic that just lives in the forest and never talks to people. But like people is fairly important to me as well. So I'd find a way to be, you know, like still interacting with society on some level because <laughs> society's over there and you go interact with it when you yeah. choose to not like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, you fit, you fit the poster for what we we're talking about earlier, these wealthy yeah. people, Weird, rich right. people ending in Idaho. up here. Yeah. yeah. Places. It's like, they're not in like a luxury condo in Maui. They're here shoveling their driveways. These people love to plow their own driveways. Yeah. Like I mean, that that's me. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like your dad, but centric cement houses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, literally. That is my dad. You couldn't convince him to leave his property. No reason yeah. ever. <laughs> he just nope. leaves out the property. Oh yeah. yeah. Nice. He leaves as little as possible. <laughs> he always says, COVID's the best thing that happened to me. So he <laughs> used to go to AA meetings in town every day. And then he started doing them on zoom because and now he doesn't have it. any reason to go no, to town. He goes to town like well, once a month he does he yeah. gets diesel in like the closest place next to him, but it's only like a couple miles. Mm -hmm. He never leaves. He just stays there as long as possible. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm borrowing his truck right now to go get a new skid steer because it's too heavy for my truck. And he's like, I, I left my truck there, but he's like, oh, yeah, I won't need to go anywhere for like two or three days. I'm like, OK, I, imagine that. That's ridiculous. I mean, I only go to town maybe twice a week yep. right now because we do everything here for yeah. work. So. How you many know. miles do you drive a week, Will? Well, I've been setting my odometer this week. This week, I did 150 miles every day, like, give or take. So, so like, you mean last week? Because today's yeah, Monday. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. yeah. I was just checking, yeah. like, because okay. you're, you, in like, in Seattle, series. and then you're here. Well, and then that's you're not Oregon, Seattle and days. Then you're, like, that's that's a week with no Seattle. That, I went to Seattle three times. Yeah, it's like, you week, probably drove like, oh, thousands bro. of miles the other day. Yeah, it was swindly, for sure. But, yeah, I've just been so impressed with my lifted Subaru with the turbo the hood like i am like can't get what over. kind of mileage do you get on that thing 14 miles to the gallon really yeah which is a little better than i was thinking are honestly. you using the odometer to cal calculate that do you did yeah. you calculate your tire size error because it's yeah, huge 
Yeah, so it's probably a little different. I No, but I mean, did you calculate that? Or did no. you just take the miles off the odometer? I've just been taking the yeah. miles off. So you're actually getting a lot better mileage than you think. Oh. Because you're driving far more miles than I'm your odometer's amazed. recording. That's So crazy. what size are your tires? 31s? 31s, yeah. So your factory tires were probably, let's say, 25 inches in diameter. That's mm -hmm. what your car assumes they mm -hmm. are. So 25 to 31, you're about, what is that? Uh, somewhere in like the 15 to 20 percent increase so your fuel mileage is actually about 15 to 20 percent better than what you're calculating what so i'm getting good <laughs> mileage oh my gosh that's amazing that is amazing that's incredible so if you track it with your phone then that'll be accurate like if you just okay, turn on yeah. an odometer app the on odometer your phone when you drive your car you should it. do us do it and let us know next week yeah i'll let you know for sure <laughs> right. yeah i know that i have to be careful though because it's like 10 miles over what the odometer reads so yes yeah, so like, the speedometer yeah you're also they're also going faster yeah, than you I'm think going, by yeah, 10 15 miles, to 20 percent yeah wow <laughs> It's a little swindly. Yeah. Yep. If this whole situation, this whole coming into wealth situation happened to me, mm -hmm. I really think that I would pretty much just do exactly what I'm doing. Just mm -hmm. the videos would be better because just right, better just take more time to, to yeah. Like I have done a lot of things and have had opportunities to do a lot of things, and just like making YouTube videos is actually just my favorite thing. And then, like yeah. every time I get into something new, I just want to turn it into a YouTube channel because it makes that thing better. Like when <laughs> I got into just have Surons, hundreds of YouTube channels. Yeah, exactly. I already do. Yeah. But like when I got into Surons, like I made a whole YouTube channel about that. Like mm -hmm. now that I'm getting into e-foiling, like I'm gonna make a bunch of YouTube videos about that. Like I just can't not. Yeah. I, I mean, like me and building change. things, it's the same. Yeah. You know, that's like building the videos is like the, sometimes yeah. I get more excited about the videos than the actual thing. Mm -hmm. like, I, I would I, say most of the time, most really. Most of the time, I'd say it's <laughs> like really 90%. Yeah. Like, Which is, even on yeah. my own, like, because <clears throat> here it's like kind of like a group Group effort, effort yeah. Like ideas from everyone, and then we kind of bring it into yeah. this video. Yeah. But like, for when I make videos on my own, I'm like, sometimes I do things for the video, not necessarily because I want to do them. <laughs> like, I've done videos about my, like, electric bikes that, like, I do it just to make the video, and then I switch the parts back to the way I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like. like I would have never done this if it wasn't for the video, but I get excited. I'm like, oh, the video is gonna look like this, and I'll put the mm -hmm. camera there. Like that's what gets me excited. And like I think the only thing that would change is I'd have like really cool slow motion cameras and yeah. like, really nice. Yeah, drones. you've been you've been talking a lot about doing like a more feature length style thing yeah. recently. That's I want to make a grind hard feature film. That would be so, so bad. cool. It's yeah. been my dream forever to make a movie. Mm -hmm. And then when Netflix started coming about, it was like my bucket list item was like, I'm going to make a movie for Netflix. But now the distribution through like our YouTube channel, yeah. more people would see it would see than it Netflix. YouTube, yeah. yeah than on Netflix. So yeah. I, I think this year we'll make a movie. We've, we've, we've awesome. thrown around some ideas. So some really good ones. See if we can yeah. There's been some pull it together. We have around. three feature films solidly in the bag. Storyboarded, yeah. yeah. It's just depending on which one we want to do first because yep. I kind of want to start with the easiest one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then... Prove the concept. Yeah. I know and we can do it because we've done... 40 minute YouTube videos that are great, tell a really good story, mm -hmm. have like a beginning, middle, and end, like our Donda video. Oh my gosh, that video it was basically a yeah. movie, yeah. Yeah. What yep. is what is the actual name of the video? I guess we always refer to it. Redneck go kart. Donda, but yeah, yeah go the redneck go kart. Redneck go kart video. If you guys haven't seen that one, that's gotta the go one watch it. That is like closest to a movie. But our movie, I'd like to make more of an adventure because I want to do yeah, really more of an intentional story. Things going through yeah. really epic, and we got to tell the adventure where sometimes we don't do that in our YouTube videos. You know, we do the build process and yeah. stuff. Yeah, but well, it's, that's it's most mainly of, yeah. focused on the engineering our channel yeah. for sure. But this movie would be both. Yeah, mm -hmm. building stuff, fixing stuff, but and then mainly and the adventure, the adventure, and like the the character moments that happen along the way. It'll all be real, so it wouldn't be a scripted movie. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, I It'd guess be awesome. So I guess if I had this amount mince wealth right now, we'd be making the movie faster. But yep. I think that we could like kickstart it and like I think uh, crowdfund a movie pretty yeah. easily. I think the bottom line here is that you don't have to worry about us like suddenly getting rich and not doing YouTube anymore because all of us would thing. still be yeah. kind of doing the same thing. Just yeah. at a higher like, level. Mm -hmm. I would be building less vehicles and more other stuff, but I'd, st I'd still be building vehicles. And like, just like you want to do like a better movie, like that's mm -hmm. one of my like frustrations with what we do for the normal content is like not being able to make the machines like 
perfect or yeah. as close to perfect as you can get them. We get them as good as we can in the time we have, which is usually pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it'd be like, you know, like just like making the movie, it'd be like we take a whole year for one build. Yeah. You know, if we had if we had if we didn't have to put out a video every week, it'd just be yeah. like spend that, time you on know, one section. One thing yeah. perfect. Yeah. Just like the video side mm -hmm. of things. So. Yeah. And right. then Will would just have a hundred Subarus for some reason. Mm -hmm. Will's going the other way. We're both like one thing, like way better. And Will's yeah. like, nope, I want a hundred Subarus well, and a hundred Hayabusas. <laughs> that being said, I would absolutely buy an airplane hangar and fold it up with toys. Yeah, because yeah. like, you show up and you you know you got this thing, you got that thing yeah. every single day. It's like, and but I'm on the same page with Ethan. Like people are always like, I'd get a Lamborghini, I'd get a Bugatti. Yeah. The funnest car to drive is. Box. It's true. Yeah. Like I think about that. I drove the Tesla all weekend. Yeah. I just a regular Tesla would be so boring. Yeah, this and you'd one, be worried the about traction control doesn't work anymore. The region <laughs> braking mm -hmm. doesn't work anymore. Nothing. It beeps at you every time you do anything. <laughs> put on a blinker. Do the window shield wipers. It just beeps at you. Yeah. It's falling to pieces, and there's nothing I'd rather be driving right now. Because every day is an adventure. Yeah. 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 And it's like it's way more entertaining. And you just don't care like yeah. somebody just hit and run the tesla and smashed yeah. it in a quarter yeah. panel i am bummed i mean it's, about a, that, it's a little though. bit of a bummer but it's like way less than if it was your oh yeah actual like it was nice like car nice you know race car and someone yeah. messed it up like that yeah, that would, would be a suck. tragedy i mean even if it was like a you know medium car if it was brand new and shiny yeah, you'd still be sucked. like oh. yeah, like if it was m's car <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rear quarter oh, yeah, damage. Were, i mean was, you know it's the first thing i said i'm glad that it was yeah the tesla not my wife's car yeah because like insurance would have covered it or whatever but your car is still a bummer Swindled. after some really big Forever. crushes like that it never really is the same that no. happened to my truck and it never drove the same after that. It already mm -hmm. wasn't great to begin with, but <laughs> it, it's even worse now. <laughs> but, yep. but yeah, I think that the, like, and it kind of goes, I guess, like this dream scenario with like mm. actual goals for Grindheart eventually aren't too far no, off it's from pretty, each other. They're basically, yeah. yeah. Because it'd be really cool to have like a property for Grindhard with a drag racing strip <laughs> that is actually, I'm going to talk to some, I've been meeting a few pilots that have some like wealth going on. Mm. A drag yeah. racing strip. That's like okay, an airstrip. Strip that is an airstrip. Cause hear me out for you two. It could be gone. Like, yeah, you know, we can't plan on it lasting forever, long forever yeah. to pay off a paved drag strip. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, not but at all. What we could do is buy a property that if something were to happen, uh, so it's an asset that you can sell yeah. to mm -hmm. someone. Yeah. So if you do a private uh, airstrip. airstrip with an airplane hangar and like a really pretty property in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. whatever we put into it when we're done with YouTube or whatever, that would still be someone worth can something. Use. So we right. would just like lose everything. It's that not we've like for. a Power Wheels racing rink exactly. or something. Yeah. <laughs> it is an airstrip what? that's private. Yeah. But because I just wish we had a place to drag race our stuff and like yeah. go on pavement and do burnouts mm -hmm. and just like that is something we're missing <laughs> a bunch of ideas that we have that we need like uh, abandoned parking lot or well, something for or even like the Hayabusa like we trying to find a place to do a top speed run on that with the, the snow bike yeah, kit. Like so be, hard, it so might hard. be next year by the time we even find a place to do yeah. it because yeah. where are you going to, it but has to be the perfect conditions that we knew was perfectly flat. Yep. Like, just don't plow it for a yeah. couple of days, get some fresh snow and just yeah. so really all that would happen is the videos would be immensely better. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Maybe less frequent, but better. Yeah. If Grindart had an airstrip, I would definitely get my pilot's license. And I would <laughs> definitely. Get hey, maybe we could plane. get Sam back if we had yeah. an airstrip. <laughs> hey, and then you could go 200 miles an hour totally and there's legally. no police in the sky just the faa yeah. but that's no. worse will that's worse oh, they know it's no. way worse yeah but you oh. can go as fast as you want yeah on the airstrip yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> maybe you should get into planes maybe that yeah. would scratch your speed itch without yeah. being like mm -hmm. inherent but no will should not get into planes yeah he, no he, he'd forget to tighten the bolt I, and then <laughs> and my wing would just <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what's good is any work, if you work on your own plane, it has to be certified. person has to certify it. Yeah. Unless you have a private airstrip and then they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like technically it has to be recertified every year or whatever. Yeah. But in between then, will, Will would find a way. He'd be like, you know what? I have this spare turbo. I'm just going to craft it onto my airplane and be able to go faster. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs>
<laughs> I think you're right. Will Maybe should not, not be able to idea. fly. That's not a good idea. Yeah, that's what uh, we, we, we do we're going to talk about today. I guess we could just talk about it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right now, Will is a contractor for Grindhard. Ah. Yes. He is not an official employee. <laughs> because of these things we've been talking about. <laughs> we could have made you an employee a while ago. Mm-hmm. But you've been getting pushing the edge, let's say, more and more and more every week, it seems. There's, There's some story new story of like things that are like, I don't know. If you hurt Swindly. somebody and you're speeding and stuff, like his, his homebrew cannonball run we can't be associated with you. Okay, well, look at this. In a month, I'm turning 22. Okay. That's a lot older than 21. Oh. And but you so, also have more money and faster cars. and Yeah, but... These problems accelerate over time as you need more and more and more. I'm just kind of thinking chilling out when I turn 22. Ah, that's a, that's a good plan, Will. When's your birthday? March 7th. So ah. Almost exactly. Close. So does that mean you're going to go as hard as possible until you're 22? No. Honestly, like... I've just been taking it slow. <laughs> really? Yeah. Since you had to quit caffeine because of your second heart attack? Yes. So I've been drinking water. <laughs> the boys made caffeine today, and it was unfortunate mm, for me. Caffeine. But, um, yeah, I've been seeing this ad for mud water on Instagram, and I think I'm going to take that up because <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I need something scrumptious in my oh. day, and this is terrible. That's not about the caffeine, though. It's, it's just like... You should, because now you have a real race car. Yeah. Uh, well, you should use it's, it on race tracks. That's what I'm going to do, I think. Because then it's fine. We can hire you as an employee. You I told Ethan. Like fully a integrated days ago. into our brand, and then you won't do anything so dumb that you tarnish the brand. Yeah. I'll just tarnish my body. <laughs> <laughs> well, your your car on the racetrack. If, yeah. if you hurt yourself, like we yeah. all do dumb things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, but. It's totally different if you're like racing around and hurt somebody else. Yeah, I know, and I that's never want to not do that. acceptable. Yeah. Even like outside of like, like a yeah. brand or like you know, it's not like yes. I'm only worried about you because <laughs> of what it will reflect like on my business. That's yeah. not it. I'm <laughs> genuinely worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. We all are. Well, we all are. We all oh. talk about it when you're not here. Oh no! <laughs> like Will has to calm down because mm-hmm. last year to, was a swindle year. When for you me. do like eight hour drives and four hours. Mm -hmm. that's not okay (laughs) (laughs) like there's like joking about it but then there's this seriousness of like eventually you are going to get hurt beyond repair or you're going to hurt somebody else beyond repair and that's not okay yeah i know and he he did tell me the other day when we were driving to bozeman to pick up the uh the the little mini truck he was like Mm -hmm. I think I'm done driving weird swindly vehicles. He's like, I think I'm going to get just a reliable car. I was like, wow, that's a very adult decision. Your fixers, your flippers, like just get a WRX, keep it. That's that's not a reliable car. It's not normal. They're like loud and they just like go (laughs) at just enough. Then what are you thinking about getting for a reliable car? Just like a truck? Well, I was you just do need a truck. You, yeah, I told I him you should just get like a good truck, like a but, Tundra or a Chevy uh, or something. It cringes me. I can't be that responsible yet. Like I can <laughs> maybe, yeah, so, yeah, maybe I can, in a month. Maybe in a month I uh, might get that responsible. But I have had some responsible vehicles, and every time I like, I just sell them and, or I trade them for a really swindly car, and then I'm back. <laughs> I'm in the not same place. saying that you need to start driving Camrys. Mm. I'm just saying that if you're doing something on the road that you'd get arrested for. You should probably yeah. not. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's to I'm be not fair. saying like <laughs> anything else. Like I, well, I am saying bring your car to a racetrack. Go 100 miles an hour for yeah. sure. Do yeah. these things. Go autocrossing with it. I'm just yeah. saying if you're doing something that's going to get you arrested. <laughs> and stay arrested. Not just like, a, oh, oops. And a <laughs> yeah. You yeah. just shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I had some ideas about things that could get me arrested, but I've just kind of put them in the background. So no honestly. more, no more, no more cannonball run. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that didn't seem like a serious yeah. Yeah, I saw a lot of sarcasm in that yeah, Will. Yeah, I just it's like <laughs> a dream of mine, but I know it's irresponsible, so I'm just not gonna do it. That's good. It it would be really cool though. <laughs> <laughs> Has there ever been like a cannonball run where things went like tragically wrong? Yeah. 
I'm the, sure. Uh, no <laughs> doubt. Like, I'm sure. Back in the old days, like, with how, swindle cars. What is it, how long has it been a long thing? Long time. Like, a really long time. Like, Probably almost as long as there's been cars, this, like, really. Forever. People have been yeah. strapping things. Coast but to coast as fast as possible, The idea right? New York to like, LA, isn't it? I want to do a real cannonball run. Like, once in my life. Like, if I, if I find out that, like... My heart's on the way out. Or like, I, you like, found that out like two weeks ago, Will. I know, but like, <laughs> if I find out that something's yeah. really wrong See, with this me. This isn't exactly what I'm talking about. Because if you do an actual cannonball run mm-hmm. and it's like a thing and it's like worth the risk to you, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't I can't say anything to that. Like, if yeah. it's your dream, like, whatever. Like, if I'm on what a I'm way out, is you're I'm essentially going. doing cannonball runs every <laughs> On a weekly week. basis just to go pick up weird vehicles in Seattle. <laughs> With cars that aren't good. Like, oh. the, last, the last time you got arrested was in a forerunner <laughs> that was falling to pieces. <laughs> But it could go over 100 miles an hour, and I found yeah, that like, out. What's it was the, pretty cool. What's the point? <laughs> you know, it's just not worth it for yourself. I know, but that's what I'm else. saying. Last year was swindly. This year, premium. Uh, I'm going to be 22. That's old. <laughs> and so, so if 22 is old, Will, what about we're both over 30 here? Old. <laughs> you guys are responsible. <laughs> you guys have, like, responsible thoughts in your mind. Like, yeah. I wake up, and I choose violence <laughs> that is accurate that is I, choose chaos. yeah i just wake up i get in my car i just rev it like rah, 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 and then i like drive here on no gasoline and like i'm like just like swindling about he does like to put like five dollars at a time in his gas tank for yeah. some reason i don't like standing at the pump for more than like two so you minutes. waste more time going to the pump frequently yeah, but it, it's like NASCAR. I go there, and then I'm out. I'm gone, you know? I don't like spending time at the pump. <laughs> Especially now that you can't go in and buy a coffee, huh? Yeah, that's like the fa- my favorite thing to do was to stop, get a coffee, and that's why I drank coffee so much, you know? You stop at that gas station five times a day. <laughs> but okay. now that I'm off the caffeine, my body's like building caffeine, which is a weird thing. Like, it's manufacturing it. I mean that is uh, that or is maybe it's just more, well, no water. that's it's more know. or less how that works not literally your co- your mm-hmm. body isn't literally manufacturing caffeine but oh. when you drink as much as you were drinking you become severely dependent on it to just not to yeah. not to function at a like a normal caffeinated level but like to function a at a normal level. uncaffeinated yeah. level that's your normal you level. need not yeah good. your normal becomes constant caffeine yeah. and you require yeah. it to function like at a base level it's a stronger drug than people give it credit it for yeah. for sure it's very addictive like, and it's not regulated at all yeah which, but when you you're know. like dying in a lifted subaru and there's like five empty monster energy drinks in the seat next to you and you're like no <laughs> that would be a very embarrassing way to go yeah. Yeah. so have you guys seen so. the latest trend on like tiktok and everywhere it's a little audio that's like Dumb. eat a two week yeah. old unrefrigerated pie Dumb ways to die. <laughs> and, and they like always something. like freeze the video right before the moment you want to see. Oh no. And then they just say dumb ways to die and put it on the screen. <laughs> so you don't get to see that. what happens. You just yeah. hear that stupid jingle 800 right. times and you never see. That's, so that's let's, we, let's we need to, we need to <laughs> make let's one. Let's end it there then. Yep. Well, we'll make you a real employee grind hard. Premium. But you do not end up a dumb ways to die. <laughs> exactly. That's but the criteria. It's not like, oh, I'm going to risk it and it's not, I'm going to be fine because I'm young and feel invincible. I just like it's just like you just don't do it in the first place. Because uh-huh. yes. you will be the meme. Oh. <laughs> we need to make one of the of your Subaru with the five with the five <laughs> monsters in the passenger seat yeah. and you just laying on the ground. We'll make a yeah. meme of it like, which dumb <laughs> ways to die. And you're just, yeah. <laughs> which actually happened. Yeah, and likely was very close to killing you. It was so close. It was all it right. was crazy. All right. <laughs> Shake yeah. Ethan's hand too. Yeah. This yes. is it's, it's yeah. a, yes. we'll both, official. We'll both be hiring you. Yeah. I think we're the grind hard owners. Yeah, I think so. we should wait until he's 22. Apparently, we need to wait a month. Yeah. He said he's yeah. going to be responsible when he yeah. turns well, 22. When you texted me though, you said you wanted to be employee this month. Yeah, I, I just want to be an employee so bad. Like <laughs> being a separated like contractor, contractor. I feel like. So swindly, yeah. Know? It's not as good, and no. then you have to pay taxes. This yeah. way, we'd be paying for your taxes. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be really <laughs> nice so it'll be your birthday present. Will. Yes, yes. There that's all I want for my birthday is to be a real swindler. Okay, yeah. but don't do anything. I won't unsurpassable before then. I won't. 